dun 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 there we are hello everybody oh you seem to have something there one moment there we go hello uh yes so milton valley railroad into the countryside Hello, Kango Fango. Nope, camera has not frozen over. Yeah, I already got it off, it's fine. <coughs> so, switching over. There we are. So, this is what we built last time. Basically, from. Uh, I'd say around this point ish. Well, technically from this point all the way to this point. Now, the scenery isn't quite done yet, as I'm sure you can tell. However, it is it started to get there. The forest bit looks nice. Right, stream channel MVR into the countryside, yes. Thank you. Okay, so... Hello, Albastru! Haha, <laughs> is the scenery done yet? Ha ha ha. How are you doing? Things going well? <laughs> right, so what do we do next? Well, I suppose we could work on this bit, which I think that's probably the best thing. So we've got a hill over here, then we've got a hill over here, and then in between those there's this flat bit where we can see the other edge of the world there. So, I'm thinking we connect those two hills. <clears throat> so, yeah, hey, uh, yep, for once, <laughs> you. Yes, a bit tired, but I'm good, thank you. Just had the my long tabletop roleplay session with Kango, and there were some problems with an elevator in the Star Trek game, yes. I'm sure Kango can elaborate if he wants to. <laughs> um, that was really, really fun. How are you, Kango Fango? Have you done something interesting today with perhaps an elevator? Well, I know you didn't do anything with an elevator, but you were also nearby. And you did have, you were in the same team. Right. I was glad you like my Bok post over on her film. Uh, Buzz of Culture, of course, for those of you who don't know, which is his OMSI 2 map. Great here, of course. It wasn't just with me. Should have taken the stairs. Awful, really. <laughs> Which ones? There was only a ladder. A ten mile ladder. Pitch black elevator shaft. Yes. <laughs> Getting those biceps built up. Ooh, ek. <laughs> One of the characters did. <laughs> well, yeah, you see, they were doing some stuff, as they want to do, in a... Uh, a geo stabilization unit, which basically it's a like a little base somewhere, little, a little underground bunker base type thing with a elevator shaft that goes ten miles underneath underneath the Earth, well, the, the planet's crust into the flowing magma, and in there there is a uh, a station, or a, a uh, yes, basically a station, where you've got all sorts of equipment that regulates the flow of magma and changes out different minerals in there to stabilize the planets, uh, the planet underneath the, actually I like that better with, as just a meadow. Yeah, to stabilize the planet uh, geographically. So 
to get rid of natural earthquakes and uh, natural continental movements and things like that. So, yeah, they need to go down there. And, well, of course, there is only the, the lift, the elevator, in that 10-mile uh, shaft. <clears throat> Onriza, Star Trek planet, yes. I'm just going to add a little bit of this in, just so that it looks like I did actually work on this bit. I just I didn't just leave it uh, plain repeating grass texture. Not only a uh, holiday destination, now pretty much a meteorological whirlwind of snow, ice, water, and magma. <laughs> yes. Granted, that sounds worse than it is, but really isn't all too good either. Yeah, well, yes, there are hemisphere spanning uh, storms now, which is the planet's natural state, but of course. Uh, do you want to build a snowman? Ha ha ha. Well, maybe, but not on Twitch, because otherwise there would probably be a copyright strike. Or a magma monster. <laughs> a magma monster. Well, maybe. <coughs> Sorry. Maybe when we get to the volcano on this map. Not that I'm saying there is a volcano or will be a volcano on this map. But when we get to it, that's when we may, might do it. Uh, field trees, there we go. I did do on my Planet Coaster stream two weeks ago. Oh yes, you did. Oh, that would be so nice though. Well, maybe, but there aren't really that many volcanoes in this area that I'm aware of. Although, how should we do this? Let's see. Actually, do I need a... Oh yeah, I need a road. Okay. Filmed, saved, quoted. Ha ha ha, yes. Right next to the mountain airship, airstrip, sorry. Clipped? Should ace, confirms, volcano on map. Read all about it. Ha 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 ha! Interesting. Very interesting. And is this Jaredice a credible source? <laughs> Approaches, paperboy. I'll take your entire stock. I was trying to think of some sort of pun there. With, like, paperboy meaning a boy made of paper. But I couldn't think of one. Oh, and now I've just thought of one. Yeah, what I should have said is... I bet he wants to be a real boy. That would have been the that would have been the perfect pun in that case. Sadly, I didn't think of it at the time. Okay, and this road can just go off into the sun's well, technically this north, so go off to the north pole. Uh, I would say yes. Charades is a reliable source. Over Charades. <laughs> Over Charades. Uh -huh. No, I'm not taking son of Va talking son of Var. <laughs> yeah, 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 shtok. Chris could have just said, is that the sequel to Pinocchio? Meh. I think my pun would have been better. Also, do you do you, any of you all wanna guess where the this pick is, was taken? It's not mine. Also, do any of y'all want to guess where this pic was taken? Wait, what? Also, do any of y'all want to guess where this pic was taken? Smiley. It's not mine. Also, do any of y'all want to guess where this pic was taken? Smiley. <laughs> was it meant to be twice? Uh, <laughs> that was funny. That. Hold on. Gotta zoom in. Well, 
<clears throat> it looks like somewhere in the UK. Probably England. What does that say? Ah, uh, can't read that sign. There's a branch of the tree, which is probably an oak, supported with a bit of wood, which would indicate it's very old, but that could be pretty much anywhere. I don't know. I'm going to guess Dorset or Somerset, perhaps. But like GeoGuessr only, it's just a picture. Nope, don't even know where, where, where that is. Oh, Bullwell. <laughs> Detective mode, look. Go ahead. I won't stop you. Well, unless you get a bit too, too overworked with it, in which case I might, but I probably won't stop you. Bullwell, Nottingham, where the wonderful Sue lives and works. I have no idea what you mean by that. You will have to elaborate if you want me to understand that. Or comprehend it, rather. Uh, very close. You can't really recognize it from this picture. Who? Who do you mean? Do you mean a bus or me? Ashurst, Hampshire. Uh, Okay. Sharice, I meant you! Wait, is that a Pokemon reference? So, yes. Oh, it is! Ah, interesting. Sue Brick thing shop. Ah! She looks like she's just jumped out of the. Well. I have no idea. She looks like she's just jumped out of... Out of Willy Wonka's clothes and... Odd Items Factory. <laughs> no, I genuinely had never seen her before. I think that probably looks good, with some bushes underneath. You're missing out. Well, what's it about? Never been to Nottingham. Sec hand chances. Wait, what? Second chances? Second chances, maybe. Or Bullwell. Sure is. For accuracy, I'll still give you a cookie. Um, What is that? Is that actually a cookie? Hold on. Right click. Uh, inspect element. What is that called? String text message. No, it's just an image. I can't see what I can't see what that image is called, unfortunately. Might be a cookie. <laughs> Might be a fortune cookie. Dun 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 It probably is a fortune cookie. I guess I can count myself. Yes, you, you know how it continues. <laughs> okay, now I'll paint a little bit of the forest ground underneath. Yes, see? This is the message. 
of the Mr. Rons. No, sorry, different thing. <coughs> By the way, that time that <coughs> was deliberate. Hmm, do I want trees between that? Maybe. Or maybe along here instead. Okay. Thank you for opening me. Oh, that's what the message of the fortune cookie is. Well, now that I know what it is, I don't really have to open it, do I? <laughs> I think that's okay. What about from this angle? Yeah, I like that. Doesn't look that interesting looking that direction, but it shouldn't really. Because that's where the interesting bit is. I'm actually quite surprised that you didn't at all comment on me referencing the Mr. Runs. And on the other side, have a very fortunate evening. <laughs> I once saw a magic eight ball. No, no, sorry. I once saw magic eat a ball. Yes. Uh, should I XDDD, Mr. Rons? There you are. Just took a moment. <laughs> okay. Shrubs. Or rather, road. Bum 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 bum. Oh, by the way, since you're here, this Monday will be Civ Six with Robin. Again, this time he has de-rusted his skills a bit, so that should be interesting. Okay. Yep, I'll probably paint a little bit of the uh, gr gravel texture underneath that and that. Uh, where is that? Where? Oh, over here, of course. Right. The Mysterons, sworn enemies of the human race, threaten to take over America as we know it. And Torchwood is ready. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The parallels between Torchwood and the Mistrons is <clears throat> present. An immortal man stands between the aliens and Earth. Only Torchwood has more, uh, in my opinion, needlessly graphic stuff in it, just so that they can market it as for adults, even though most of the stories are pretty much... <laughs> most of the stories feel more immature than a lot of the stories for produced for other kids' shows, good kids' shows. And I say kids' shows, I mean shows that are also appropriate for kids. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yes. Whoa! Ah, glad to see. I'm glad to see you're excited by that prospect. That stream will be a right treat. Thank you. Just don't expect me to actually win because. <laughs> well, I know that Robin's been playing the game a lot. 
and he's actually been practicing so we'll see if I do win however if I do win however then I'm gonna call myself lucky <laughs> sure is. yeah very true I'd say a crossover would be welcome although I do prefer parallels ta ah yes the great virtual machine jokes the true pinnacle of joke dumb dumb dom of course coming from dominate a, a king dumb is where the king dominates so but yeah so a joke dumb would be where jokes dominate i need a fence no not a sell stuff at no just just to to create a barrier between land yeah, very true. All right, all right. Oh, there we go. What do you mean? Oh, Dom innate. Yeah, makes so much sense. Oh, didn't you know that? I think I suppose that's one of those things that's really obvious when you find out, but that you'd never really think about, and so you never really notice. The king part's quite obvious. <laughs> the king part. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yes. Indeed, yes. Just like my gender identity. <laughs> ah, I see what you mean. <laughs> Okay, I'll need a gate there. What about event? I thought the Dom was just an end bit. Oh right. Oh I see. Ah right. Mm hmm Where's the gate? Ah there's a gate. Hello gate. Okay. Io gate. <laughs> okay. Lich gate? Do you mean lich as in the undead horror or what? What do you mean by lich? Oh, that. Sussex Lich Gate. Hmm. Train Sussex. Eh, probably not. Probably not here. Is that the right asset? Yes. Um. Maybe more suited for churches or summit. Hmm, probably. Uh, Sussex and well, the UK. Kind of forgot we were in the US for a sec. <laughs> yes, hey hey. Sussex. Wessex was a kingdom. Incidentally, the, the sex and Sussex, Wessex, and so, so on comes from, of course, the Saxons, because that was the place where the Saxons ruled, which was in the south, Sussex, or Wessex, the place in the west where the Saxons ruled. So, kind of obvious if you think about it. South Saxons, West Saxons. Well... Well, I'm sure there were some other Saxons who might disagree with that, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I like that.
Okay. Good. Probably should have a fence going along here. Well, I might leave that. I thought maybe a fence so that if you look out from over here, you might see the spline going along. But I think it looks better without. I need to add crossbox here and whistle boards and s signals. Uh, I've still got to redo all the signaling stuff on the flats anyway, because there's some stuff broken there. But I will do that later. Yay, procrastination! Well, not, pre re not really. Choice of timing, let's call it. Now, oh yeah, we still also need to do this crossing. Ugh. Now, oh, also this crossing, yes. Hmm. Uh, now, where is the last place I... Okay, I think I know where I used the cross box. Over here. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, over here. Right. Not one track, two track, please. Yes, with source. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay, that goes there. And that goes there. Well, I might as well place the <laughs> saw. Yes. Nice radish with um, garlic. Also, the arrows were just to signify that you had missed two. Huh? Hey, Wessex, Sussex, and Essex. What's with Nessex? Oh, oh, sorry, I did read those. I just forgot to read them out loud. Wait, does this also not have a... Wait, I thought this one had whistleboards. Huh. I guess that one also doesn't have whistle boards. That's... I've, at, at some point I really do have to just go over all of this. Make sure that... All the signs are correct and the signaling things. Also I'm not sure if I want these... Uh, auto whistle things. Um, all right, towards the Vikings? No. <laughs> well, the Vikings. Well, well, Viking means raid, so you would go on a Viking. It means you you would go on a raid, and if you are a Viking, it means you are a raider. So as soon as you went back home and you stopped raiding, you would no longer be a Viking, and all the the women and children who didn't go on raids, well, they weren't Vikings. And when the Vikings came and they conquered and they stayed here and they stopped raiding, they also were no longer Vikings. They were Norse men, but, well. Uh, hmm. Not sure if Nessex was thing or not. I have no idea. We've got Northumbria, which might be good. Never heard of it. I swear you know everything. <laughs> well, I just find lots of different things interesting, so I tend to accumulate at least a little bit of knowledge in a broad spectrum of stuff. So, might give that appearance. <laughs> it wasn't, no. Ah. Would it be good if trains as at authors also set custom place sounds? Um, oh, so you mean if you, if you put, if you placed an object that it would make a sound? I think that would get way too annoying. For example, if someone makes a radio tower that a placing would make a beep, beep 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 sound. Ah, I wonder what inspired you to think of that example. Hmm. Hmm hmm hmm. <laughs> Grass rustling for the asset. Maybe it might make it feel more realistic, but it would be good if it were a feature that you can have on. But I would definitely have the option to either change the volume and or disable it completely. 
So next question, should this building be in use still or should it be abandoned? Turnable in the audio settings, of course. Yes, of course. Hey, <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Well, placing a streetlight. <laughs> Sounds a bit like. I think that's what it's like in. Well, of course, you've got the sound, different sounds in, in Planet Coast, but you've also got them in Jurassic World, I believe, although I haven't played that game. Hmm. We could try making it abandoned. It might give a little bit more history to the place. Ooh, we might as well, we could also have a, the remnants of a, of a siding or something going off that way. That could be fun. Ooh, I'll have to go back to that other place where we've got the old siding. It was there. There we are. Ah, and transport fever in it? I think so. Yes. They went that away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They say there's uh there was something there. Let's say comes to there. Oh. And then that no not <laughs> no no no. Glad that didn't uh, mess up with the undo. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> a bit of water. My apologies. Right. So, need to lower that into the ground a bit. Maybe increase the angle of it as well. And then this one can change the angle as well a little bit. There we are, lower that down. I'll probably add a few more spine points so I can have a little bit more variation in uh, in how much is shown. Actually, hmm, I prefer it being a little bit higher, maybe even a little bit more higher than that. Actually, no, that wouldn't work because they would get rid of it because they, when they change the ballast, it would be in the way because they do periodically change the ballast they've got these machines with the like big scoops on either side and they run it along and it basically just scoops up the old ballast and then you've got these nozzles at the back that just spread new ballast and if you had the old tracks coming up to that either the whole junction would still be in place or if they torn up the junction they would also get rid of that so that the ballast spreading thing would also still work so let me move that back to about there. Let's say. Placing a tornado siren. Or something like that. Depends on what your tornado sirens sound like, I have no idea. Okay, let's move that to there. Yes! He says. Let's add a f Ooh, that's a bit too close. Let's add a couple there, and let's add another one in there as well. Okay, that one should go a little bit lower. Probably like almost completely bury the bury the tracks. That one should go a bit lower as well. Then let's keep that one quite low as well. And let's make that one go up just a little bit. And then let's do a little, just one more. Let's make that one go, just dash, just go down. There we are. That does not look that good. It has to go, it has to go underground at the end. Like that, it has to just fade out. Ah, yes, that looks good. So at one point there were tracks here. Maybe we could even have like a track in here that's just lower it down quite a lot if there's uh, grass growing over it all the way. Okay. A 
boxcar. Maybe I can put one of the... Uh, derailed ones on it. On the root layer, maybe even a static object? Yeah, that's what I wanted. A one of the derailed ones. Let's see. Uh, space? Oh, not back scar. Huh. There we are. Oh, of course. Yeah. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. This needs to go in the Templar player. Okay. Well, unless you're taking in an accent. <laughs> well, we'll see. Might happen accidentally. Two letter? Two two words? Box car? Ah, uh, no, now just finding all the... Oh, actually, yeah, there we go. That one can, I believe, also roll. Yes! That one down a little bit. There we are. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Uh, talking, not taking in. <laughs> yes. Did you shunt them boxcars? <laughs> that joke was cheap. Yes, I know. But if we, if we, uh, if we save on some of the jokes, that means we'll have more left over to spend on the jokes where it really counts. So it's good to save like that. In that their yard, eh, so what? Shut this box. Backs, not box. That's the thing. The thing, yes. XD, XD. <laughs> okay. Haha. <laughs> no, I love all your jokes. Aww. Even though I know that some of them really aren't that good. <laughs> Okay, let's just have that go across there, then back there as well. I feel there should be a tractor or something standing there. Let's find, actually, let's find, I think I've got a, let's, yeah, let's use the same tractor as I used over here somewhere. Right, I thought I had one over here, didn't I? Somewhere else? Oh, no, 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 it was on the... Oh, <laughs> it was somewhere along here. Ah, this one, yes, there we go. That's the asset I wanted. Hello, VGR. Hope everything's good for you. Putting down a tractor? No, not a... Uh, 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 what's it called? Wait a minute, what's happened here? Is that? Wait a minute, is that supposed to be that way? Hmm, that looks okay. Huh, look, you can see that outline there. That's strange. <laughs> this is like actual archaeology. Because actually, if you didn't know this, with the pyramids, the, the pyramids at Giza, it looks like they've got four sides, well, technically, they've got, it looks like they've got five, with one at the bottom, but four sides, but actually, they're eight, because I think sometime during World War One or something, uh, there was an airplane pilot, or maybe it was World War Two. I'm not sure, in one of the wars, there was a pilot who flew over there, and they took some photographs, reconnaissance, and... On those photographs, that that was taken just the right time of year at morning or evening. I think morning, and so 
the sun was coming in right at the, the, the angle of the faces and you could see that actually it's eight faces because of the shadows. Let me see if I can find a picture quickly. One moment. <clears throat> One moment. Da, 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 da. Not sure if this is the... <clears throat> Hold on, I'm not sure if that's the original photograph, but that's one of the photographs anyway. One moment, let me switch over. There. You can clearly see here, actually if I move it over here you can see it a bit clearer. You can clearly see eight faces. You've got two there, and then another two, and another two, and another two. There are plenty of modern images of it, but um, there you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are ju just slight angle, which you normally wouldn't see unless you're looking at it at a very specific time of the year, or, well, and or time of day. Well, and time of day. So, yes. I just work, I finished working on, uh, okay, start with private, uh, I uh, read the plane, yes. Well, Arcadia, of course, ID number seven, I remember you telling me about that, Charles. Very interesting stuff. There, they are eight sides. Well, nine if you count the underside. Oh yeah, I see it. It has the flag of the RFRA just band nose. Okay. Yeah, Charles. Why was it built like that? I don't know. The real purpose of the pyramids, why they were built, is still very much a mystery. Even though there are, of course, many. Uh, popular theories. The fact is that nobody knows for sure what the pyramids were built for. There are lots of different theories, which many of them are very interesting, even if some are more believable than others. Uh, but yeah, so if we can't even say why the things were built in the first place, how should we, how could we be able to say why they were built the way that they were? Um, I was there, can I confirm? Oh, you were at the pyramids! Did you see the eight... Wait, is that what you mean? Did you see the... Did you see the eight faces? Did you see that? What do you confirm, though? Uh, the left side has a half... Red, blue, top half, and gold or half with a... On the left side, sun... And sun with ten... Islands. Okay, yeah, archipelago. Right, I see. Uh, the pyramids are still very much a mystery. <laughs> Palm on the right side. I helped build them. Oh, you helped build them! Okay, please, 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 please tell me. Why were they built? Please. That. Oh, also, if you helped build them, please tell me when were they built. Because. The, the Sphinx is clearly much, much older because of the, the water damage caused by the Nile flooding, which puts it a few thousand years uh, earlier than was previously thought. And if it, the, when the pyramids were built, could that, like, is, please, please, I have thousands of questions. <clears throat> Carved my name into brick 248,436, if you look hard enough. <laughs> Well, next time I visit, I'll be sure to have a look at that brick. Oh, is it is it one of the bricks that's inside the structure? Like, it's, it's, it's solid, for, for the most part. Or is it one of the ones that is on the outside? Which, incidentally, were originally covered by smooth rose granite. Bit of fun on a dull weekend, you know. Ah, all right. So, they were built to a table of boredom, basically, is what you say. What you're saying. And how you got the bricks up... Were you told why the pyramids were built? 84,000, not 48. Wait, what? 448,000. What do you mean, 84,000? 
it's 248436. That's 248,436. You were probably thinking in the German way of, of saying it, where you say, we would say uh, 208,000. 8 and 40,000. No, it's filled with rubble and gravel on the inside. The passage is dug out from that. Oh, but still be solid. Yeah, not much really went on back in the day. No sky sports at all. Ah, right. Oh, right, my mistakes are right. I just saw the 8-4. Yeah, never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course you would want that to be forgotten very quickly. So let's do that. Right. Okay. It's good. And um, yeah, that's good. No, oh, actually, I like that there. That little bit there. Okay. I, did I, I guess I just painted that. <sighs> oh, I'm tired. Anyway, how does this look? Not finished, of course. But yes, I quite like that. But what about Pilotikani tree training and Luftflug Luftflug Agency Luftflug Agency Egyptica? <laughs> Are those? What are those? Are those just inventions of yours or something? Uh, RKF, so it's the kind of civilian version of the uh, thing which with the military variant is larger right, of it. I see. I mean, that doesn't really do a lot for me to uh, have those descriptions, but. Um, yes, I see what you mean. See, just a few shrubs here and there can add a lot. Inventions of mine, or are they creatures? Prehistoric creatures, perhaps. Uh, yes, okay. Right. Place those there, move them down, move it over. I think it's good to mix up what kind of shrubs we're using so that the different areas feel a bit different. For example, uh, over here, it's mainly these shrubs which I've used all over the place, and then these ones and these ones. Well, the, yeah, those ones. And if over here I then mainly use these shrubs instead, going forward that way, that can create, a, even if you don't consciously notice it, it can make the areas feel distinct, which is good. It still feels roughly the same. It feels like it fits with each other, but it feels like it's its own area, which uh, makes it a bit more interesting, I think. <coughs> Sorry. Da -da 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 yes. Okay. I thought it was the ancient joint Dutch Egyptian personal flight agency back then where they have taught people how they can fly. It was a really weird thing, like they applied paint to their limbs, which was said to make their bodies lighter and more weightless as to allow easy flight. Ah, so it's a historical thing then I see. So 
So you didn't make it up. It's, it's just it's historical fact. Let's say a scientifically proven historical fact. You can't argue with that. Ahem. Which is funny because uh, the whole concept of science is that you try to disprove things. You try to question the thing itself. You try to question science to try to understand more about what's happening. You try to disprove things and grow from that, but um, sadly a lot of people don't treat it like that anymore. Uh, that rhymed. Oh, I see. Yeah, so studies suggest that none of the, this actually happened, but I'm sure it's all a cover-up. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you're posting all those, you're, you're making such an effort, writing all those details about the plane, but it really doesn't do a lot for me, at least because at the moment I don't have anything, any context of what I'm currently doing where that would be relevant. So I can, I mean, I can appreciate that you want to share that. And if you want to share that here, then it's fine. But it's just so you know that I personally don't get anything from that. It's like, <clears throat> it's a bit like if someone were to start describing, I don't know, for example, if this was a tr if this was a stream about well, if this was a, a for example a a Civ six stream. And someone started describing in meticulous detail how motorcycles worked, then that does, isn't really re that relevant. If you if you know what I mean, uh, this body paint was spe specially prepared for this. From now on, extinct. Uh, sorry, for this. From now, from now, extinct genus of plant. All oh, right, herbs. Which was said to possess magically oriented powers. Yeah. See, for example, that's fun because that's a story. Yeah, it's not really relevant to what's going on at the moment, but that's a fun story. Uh, the important bit is fun. Fun story. But yeah, anyway. Might as well add a few little shrubs here and there. Dun dun dum dum da dum 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 dum. Well, mystically. Oh. Yeah, you know. Okay, does that bush add? Yes, but it needs to be moved down. Okay. I probably need to bring a uh, second type of bush in this as well. It is as well. Uh, descendant of this ancient preparer of this body paint mixture decided to tell me all about it. Ah, was that you by any chance? Interesting, if you actually look up uh, Charlemagne and how many children Charlemagne had and how many they had and so on and so on and so, on and so forth, you pretty soon get to pretty much everybody being descendant from Charlemagne in some way. <laughs> It, or uh, Charlemagne being, yeah, being a relative of them. If you look into it, it's it's it can be interesting if you're that into that sort of thing. If you find that interesting, 
that can be interesting, basically what I'm saying. Yes, actually, Jew of Egypt, uh, giver of flight. Oh, is that your title? Did you inherit it? Was it a hereditary title? Um, pronounced you. Oh, you of Egypt. Ah, I see. Jew, you. Okay. Probably add a, a fence along here as well. Okay, it should come in from somewhere in here, I'm guessing. Yeah, they'll be fine. You, you said, was that you by any chance? Yeah, I know. Yes. The descendant of someone else, of that other guy. Okay, and here they've just put the fence right over the tracks. Oh, right, yes. <laughs> I also need to add, oh, well, maybe I should add. Wait, is that the right one? Ooh, no, that's the... Actually, I suppose that could be the, the right one. The Senate was called Ikai of Gibberless. <laughs> I thought you were the descendant because you said yes. So wait, 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 wait. So I asked if you were that descendant, and then you said yes, actually, Jew of or or you of Egypt, giver of light, <clears throat> which means that that is you, yes. And then to confirm that, you said you said was it you by any chance? Then you said oh right. And then you said the descendant was called Ikai of Gibraltar. But didn't you just say that the descendant, which you confirmed was you, was called you of Egypt, give it a flight? Aren't you just giving two different names for the same individual, namely you, here? That's a bit confusing. C R A K F O seven is my latest DLC to Eliza's story. Because Eliza, Catherine, Cleo, MD, Carol, and Kiana fly in the flight into the lagoon with it. Ah, I, I've no, I don't know what you mean by the lagoon, but sure, let's see what you mean. Ah, yes, you is you. <laughs> oh right, that that's what confused me. <laughs> no, 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 I said it wrong. I meant the original guy was called You of Egypt, Giver of Flight, and the descendant was Ikai of Gibraltar. My mistake. Oh, so you are Ikai of Gibraltar then, since you say yes, actually, <coughs> to what you afterwards confirmed was a response to you said me. Was that you by any chance? <laughs> Isn't it lovely how confusing this gets? Ah, you must have 
probably forgot. Maybe. I probably have. Um... I was told by the descendant, Ikai of Gibberless, that's not you, that's Ikai. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, I thought it was me, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's put the traffic stoppers in here. I've been putting it off, but now let's do it. Let's do it tonight. I can't do it. I can't do it. I really feel that I can't cope. We'll revamp. Make more camp. A sight show from yesteryear. No, that doesn't fit like that, I think. I think it's slightly different. Peter, I remember the lagoon, but I can't put it now. Hmm. But that's okay. Right, so. Two track traffic stopper. Is that the correct one? Yes. Considering that we have two tracks. Now. Thing is. I don't actually need to connect the tracks to this. I just need to connect, connect the road to this. And then I can move this down into the ground. I can run it into the ground. <laughs> no. No, I would never. Well, hardly ever. If you know where that's from. It's from H.M.S. Pinafore, the, the opera. Uh, well, it's actually quite comedic, but also quite critical by Gilbert and Sullivan. I think in, from the 18th century, so the 1700s. Guess what? They did it! They did it! No, never. What? Never? <laughs> well, hardly ever. Yes. They did it. They made a brand new Doctor Who. I where is I need to find the crossing things. Hold on, let's go up to not the sea. I think I used them here, yes. No. Uh gravel pit? No. Wait, did I not Did I seriously not use the Okay. Well then, I'm gonna have to get the get them manually. Gr crossing wood grade crossing. Oh, I've used them right here. I went all the way just to come back here, then search for them manually, then find them right there. Literally, hold on. Let's see how many feet away from where I wanted them. Huh. Literally 217 feet away from where I needed them, I went all the way to the other side of the map, then went back, and then searched for them manually, then saw them there. Ah, uh, yes, that is indeed clip-worthy. No, it's not. It really isn't. Well, depends on the viewer. Right. <clears throat> I watched some Doctor Who episodes for the first time today. Oh, what episodes did you watch? Oh, I hope you didn't watch uh, the the Jodie Whittaker era stuff. Well, spirited by Chris Chibnall. I hope because not because of Jodie Whittaker, of course. I really like her as an actress, and I think she brings a lot to the part just because of the scripts and the showrunner. Um, oh, reboot original. I actually quite enjoyed it. Hey. Hey, nice. What season was it? Uh, the one about the timey wimey wiggly ball and the couple and a couple of the flux stuff. Oh, so then it was. Yeah, you watched the the brand new stuff. I haven't actually seen that season yet, so it could be good. It could be. I highly doubt it. I doubt, I doubt that I would find it good. I mean, but you never know. I could be surprised. Could be pleasantly surprised. I haven't seen that yet. I see, I see, I see. Oh, <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you enjoyed it, that's great. Yeah, I've not seen the late season. From what I saw, I thought it was quite good. Hmm. Yeah, I think if you watch it, it might be that if you don't know 
anything about Doctor Who and you watch it, then you might find it better than if you were comparing it to what had come before, if that makes sense. I would suggest starting from the, the 2005 stuff, honestly, with, with Rose. Or when, or even when Matt Smith regenerates, if you like the more fairy tale thing. Because Matt Smith, the 11th Doctor, you see what you've done now, you've brought me onto Doctor Who, so that, this is on you. <clears throat> so Matt Smith, when he started in the, <laughs> when he started in the role, he was, it was basically a, a fairy tale story with the girl Amelia Pond finding this, uh, strange raggedy man, raggedy man, in a box in her garden, this time traveller and things, and then he... Oh, you're going? Oh, oh, oh no, no, it's your birthday! Oh, well, uh, congratulations! Right, past midnight there. Ah, well, hope you're gonna have a nice day. Well, it's a good start to it anyway. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you like if you like the more fairy tale version, I say fairy tale. It's it's like it's got fairy tale elements to it, but at the same time, Matt Smith does absolutely bring across that yes, this is an alien who's been around for thousands of years, and you don't want to mess with him. But at the same time, he's all jovial and young. But if he wants to, he can look very old. So in his eyes, I mean. So yeah. I don't want to go off too long on this because I think it might drive some people away. <laughs> well, maybe not, but since you've probably all been here for quite a few longer Doctor Who tangents, but I don't want to overdo it. So let's get the crossings. Right. Hey, Bertha, yes. Uh, Joyce, what do you? Here, have a few cookies. <laughs> Ah, and the, the proper ones, not fortune ones. I mean, we could get away with maybe just using cross bucks, but no, I we really have to use some sort of uh, barrier, I think. Uh, oh, right, before that. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention, but from the occasional glances, it was good. Ah, well, that's nice to hear. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Chris, ah, you get a few proper ones too. Aw, thank you. They're the last in the pack. <laughs> Did you know that pack like that is just an abbreviation of the word packet or package. Could be either. Depends on the situation. <clears throat> but it's just, it is. Well, depends. Um, yeah, a packet. Package, yes, could be either. Package? <laughs> yeah, you can pack something, and if you've packed something, then it's either a packet or it is a package saying it is a pack it's a bit ah uh, yeah at least that's my understanding of it but i'm fairly confident in that packet packet package pack packet packet package then hmm okay Okay, that there. Then I need to do the set up the TRC. TRC? TRC? I think it's TRC. I quite often forget which way around those letters go in that abbreviation. I think it's TRC trigger that I need to get. TRC, yeah. Okay, good. TRC trigger. TRC 3 trigger for closure of rail crossing. Good. 
Uh, ATLS? No, not ATLS. No, 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 no. Let's have one there. Have one there. I'm going to have to look up the settings for these for the 55 speed limit. Uh, actually, did I have one for that? I actually can't remember. I might not have. No, it's not back there. Did I ever have one on this stretch? I know I've had quite a few times the road crossed over, but it was just the dirt road that didn't have traffic on it, so it doesn't need the crossing things. Oh, well, this one. Ah, yes, here we go. What's the setup? 200, 200, no. Okay, it's X and the thing. Okay, let's do find <clears throat> X X X X X zero zero. So we've got up to six, huh? Up to six. So the la the next one is seven. That I need to set up, which is this one. So let's do X zero zero seven and one. 200, uh, 200, x001, uh, well, no, 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 007 and 2. I'll have to double check that other one as well. 200, 200, I did type in 7, yes? Yes. Then let's make the stopper, x007 and seven and three then the uh, barriers x zero zero seven and four. Oh, what did i want here uh ring while the cat is closing down the top track sign is visible display is two this one x zero zero seven and Let's see, one, two, three, four, that would be five. That and that. Display two. Okay, let's do the other one as well while we're at it. X008 and one. So the first one <clears throat> is the first number thing is the group name, so of the crossing, all the elements that make up that one crossing, which in previous versions of trains you could just have a number, but in TRS-19 it will break unless you have a letter in it, which is why I put the X in front, so it's X for crossing, of course. Then the AND symbol, and then the last one needs to be a number, which is the, I, well, I think it needs to be a number, it could have, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. Anyway, it might actually, it, maybe it doesn't need to be a number, Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Anyway, it's a, a string that identifies the individual element. So, for example, this one, x008, so the name of the, the crossing, and 1, which is this, this one's unique identifier, which is um, how this works. Was that one? Yes. No. x008. And two. And yes, I have messed those numbers up before, and it has cost me uh, <laughs> great issues. <clears throat> Basically, a lot of time wasted. Just trying to figure out why doesn't this work? Oh, because I typed it in wrong. Eight and three. X zero zero eight and four. Ring bell while it's closing. Then two tracks. X008 and five, yes. One, two, three, four, five, yes. That, that, that. Now, okay. Let's move this train <clears throat> over there. And let's use this little loco there for demonstration, or for not demonstration, for testing. Put that there, save. 
Cement works are really quite impressive, I've got to say. Thank you. X00 B and 1. B and 1? Hmm. No, it was an eight. Because I number the crossings. I could, of course, give them individual names. So, for example, I could have it be uh, cement crossing one or cement crossing two, and that could be the identifier. But I prefer to just name them. Let's change the environment as well a little bit. Said the evil scientist. No. Well, technically yes, but... Um, that's not what I'm referencing. Like that. Now, I know you won't be able to hear, but that's fine. It's so quiet I can't even hear it, really. Can I even hear it? No, I basically can't hear it. That's fine. Now let's keep an eye on this here. Does that work? Oh, alright. Or Xing Nathasil. Nathasil? What do you mean? Zero one. Nathasia, I think it is called. I cannot hear it. I cannot hear it. Yes, I can't hear it either. It's, it's very quiet for me as well. I mean, I literally... Okay, I'm gonna take... Look, my... my your phone. There you go. Now you can listen to it. Okay, that worked. I've just turned the volume up a lot. There you go. So that works. Now I've got to do it the other way around. Oh, thanks. Nathaniel. Oh, Nathaniel. Oh, right. I thought you were... It, it, to me, it looked like not a but there's no S in there. You're right. I thought because Xing and a place name and, and N something T H E N I something, I thought not a but no, of course it isn't. I just didn't look properly. Actually, that's wrong. Nathaniel. 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 Ah. Oh. Okay, let's put it on the other track. <laughs> I mean, if we're at this. We really also need to put in the traffic stoppers on this bit. Unless, well actually that's a bit awkward there because it's, well, unless we just don't care if they drive through there, that should be fine. That reminds me of Jeff Wayne's musical version of the War of the Worlds here. <laughs> the musical version. Wait, the musical version of War of the Worlds? Yeah. It even has the Thunder Child in it, doesn't it? Come on, Thunder Child. Come on, Thunder Child. Yes? No? Maybe? I don't know. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, see? I love it. Da da dun da dun da dun dun. Da da dun da dun da dun. Da da dun da dun da dun dun. Da da dun da dun da dun. Da da dun da dun da dun dum da da dun da dun da dun or similar. It's been a while. Okay, accelerate. Okay, that's already going off. Great. I'm going to have to listen to it tonight. <laughs> ah, <laughs> well. <laughs> 
I'm glad that my rendition has had a positive effect. <laughs> for, for for a while, that was very good. Oh, for for a while, that was very good. Oh, thank you. Okay, that one. Come on, close. There we go. Might be closing a little bit late, but I do want the player to experience it closing after all. Although that does seem... Mm. Yeah, I need to increase that. <clears throat> I need to increase that to like maybe try 250 for the, the, the triggers distance. Because that was only going at like 43 or something. And if it's going at 55, then by the time it's down, the train will be on it, I think. I've never seen it. Didn't a thing like this appear in World War of the Worlds? Uh, yeah, similar to that, yes. I don't know why, in both of the films, the Thunder Child was cut. Because, to me, the Thunder Child is such an important part of the story. Because the Thunder Child represents, of course, the industry and, of the, the well, war. And, well, it is literally a warship. And it represents the cutting edge of human technology and it shows that yes even though the thunder child uh, is defeated at least it shows that the martians are not invincible it shows that yes if you have a warship and you crash it into them they are going to fall. And to me, yes, it's at great cost, but there is that thing, and to me that is an important part of the story, so I don't really know why they cut it out of both versions of the film. <clears throat> I don't really remember the movies. Well, I do. <laughs> Been here since I saw him. Well, same. <laughs> yeah, I've I'm, I'm, I'm just got a good memory. Eh, I don't really feel like me putting the crossings in here. Let's uh, continue elsewhere. Also, message above. I mean, what do you mean? Uh, that's the one from Half. Oh right, that's the one from Half Life Two. But they said it was based on War of the Worlds. Mhm. Mm yep. Right. It's always a bit tricky when I because when I, when I see something change, I often look over. So I read the thing. <clears throat> I read the 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 thing, the the message. But if I'm already talking about something else then, because it might might be something immediate that I need to address now, <clears throat> but if it's not, then I need to finish what I'm saying, but then in my mind I've already ticked off, okay, I've had a look at that, I read that, so sometimes I miss them, yes. I miss reading them out loud. Did you read the book then, or where did the Thunder Child appear in? Um, I didn't read the book. Well, I read, I read parts of it when I was researching different writing styles and the origins of sci-fi because the uh, well the the time machine and the war of the worlds is well quite really very very early sci-fi and the inspiration for a lot of what came after so yeah but it, I it appeared in the book it appeared in the musical. Incidentally, <clears throat> that's also the ship that the, the so the there's in Star Trek, there's a, an Akira class ship. That's named the Thunder Child in honor of the I think it was a Rambau. In the War of the Worlds thing. Uh, Thunder Child, because of course the Akira class was developed 
as a response to the uh, to the Borg and the Dominion and, and things. So these great threats, these great threats to uh, the, the Alpha and Beta Quadrant. And so to name a ship that's designed to take them on, or at least to try to take them on, the Thunderchild, I think works quite well. And also, Thunderchild, I think, is a great name for a ship. <clears throat> yeah, I getcha. Eliza, cookies. I'll take those. <laughs> Was the musical also made into a film? I don't think so. But I think you can find it online. At least, I think you were able to a while ago. Never seen it or heard of it. Eliza, to the back of the, of the plane. Hey, any of you all want cookies? <laughs> I, I don't know. They probably do. Raise his hand. Wait, how did I get here? Haha. <laughs> About a year ago, it was on TV as a live performance. Ah, interesting. I did not know that. Okay. Uh, that's how I first found it. Ah, I see. All right. I've never had one. Hmm. Well, I did have live performances, just no TVs. <laughs> Head on in the background whilst I made some scans. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> then looked it up later. Yes. I'm glad you found that. Okay. Right, let's rotate that the other way. Uh, Scarlet, referring to Daiwa Scarlet from Uma. Zoom Pretty Derby, which is an anime video game. So go watch it, it's funny. <laughs> that's not my recommendation, that's VGI's recommendation. I'll have some gold, referring to gold ship, another character from UMPD. Looking like she's gonna pass out. Oh. Is she is she eh, like motion sick perhaps? Da, 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 da. That's gonna be stuck in my head now. I don't know the lyrics to that except for, of course. Come on, thunder child. Come on, thunder child. Although that last bit doesn't seem quite right, the melody. Anyway, if I'd listened to it again, I would know how it actually goes, but then it would be even more stuck in my head. Uh, <clears throat> air sick, plane sick, cookie sick, no afraid of sudden plane maneuvers. Ah, well, that makes sense. Sorry, no, don't apologize for it, it's a great song. Well, great melody anyway. Yeah, well, song is also good. Really captures the feeling of the moment, I find. Even though I've heard that in the book, even though I haven't read it, I can't confirm this, uh, the Thunder Child manages to destroy a few more of the tripods before uh, the Thunder Child uh, gets destroyed. Because I think in the in the book, the Thunder, Chi Thunder Child at the end just kind of <clears throat> vanishes into the fog and smoke and things. And it's I think it's a little bit different, but I think it's better than <laughs> leaving it out completely. Which, I mean, it would be silly to do that, it's such an important part of the story, of course. Well, I find, anyway. 
Well, not necessarily the story, but the... It will. It's an important part to the story, not necessarily the plot. And that might be why it was excluded from the films. Uh, <clears throat> Barrel rolls and such. Also a crybaby. Well... Sensitivity can be described in multiple ways. Where did you first find out about the musical, if I may? Um, last time I checked your name wasn't May, so since you're not May, I don't have to answer that. You said, if I may. I'm assuming they were intended to be brackets. If I bracket am may. Nothing wrong with crying. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> it's natural and very important. No shame in it. Yes, I agree with that. Uh, but constant. Hmm. She probably just needs a bit of comforting, a bit of reassurance. Nope, and I'm not a rock in South Devon either. <laughs> well, that's good to know. Especially in dust or other stuff gets our eyes. Ah. Don't we all need that? Ah. I think most people do, yes. And I think many of the people who claim that they don't, either, I mean, some of them, yes, could have great personal resolve, willpower, and be able to comfort themselves, which some might argue is a bit of a loophole, because if they comfort themselves, then they are being comfort, just not from an external source, which could be argued either way. But I think most people... Well, I don't want to get into that because that is a very complicated subject, which would take a bit too long to talk about considering we've only got 20 minutes left. <clears throat> She's a humanized horse. What do you think? Oh! Oh, I see. Oh, it Oh! Oh, right. I had no idea that there was a crossover from those series. Anyway, uh, I mean, if it's alright, if you wanna, if you don't wanna answer, was just pure, unwithheld curiosity. No, I do want to answer. It's just the way you wrote it. Um, I think maybe 2017 or so? Because I was looking up uh, I remember I was looking up well I was doing research on naval vessels as you do <laughs> uh, because of I don't remember exactly why but I was doing it because of something <clears throat> and so I found a channel on YouTube that talked a lot and I do mean a lot about the different naval vessels and different descriptions and things like that. And so I watched some of that. And then I found that there were also a few videos about uh, fictional ships. I was, yeah, f about fictional ships. And one of them, I recognized the name Thunderchild, which I'd previously heard of from Star Trek. Yes, the ship that was named in honor of that other fictional ship. <clears throat> so then I thought, wait, Thunderchild, is that about Star Trek? But no, it looks like there is an ironclad on there. And then I looked in with that. And watched that video, which was about that section of War of the Worlds, I wait, what? That's part of it? And then I searched for it, and then I found the song 
And then I found some other parts of the musical as well, and then I listened to that stuff, and then I, I yeah. So, I mean, that's that's how I got onto that, and then that started. But that was sometime in 2017, I think. Um, nay. I mean, it's alright if rich. Nay. Oh, rolling on the grass is part of the fine dough. Hmm. I just you watch the anime before you think of anything else. Um, okay. Um, alright. Just to tell you, it's their composition of nitrous and human with some horse features. Uh, oh, wait. It's just tail and ears. I'm a damas. Ah, I don't know about that. Trace, alright. Thanks for that. <clears throat> oh, nonsense. Here's an artwork of Daiwa Scarlet, if you're wondering. Hold on, I'll have a look. Have a quick look on that. Uh, oh, right, I see. Mm hmm. Is her name Thomas, by any chance? Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. Do but do you get the reference though? All right. Okay. I know that this isn't a lot of big scenery work like we did last time, but it is important nonetheless. Making sure that they we've got these. Uh, the shrubs here that it looks good. I probably place them in the woods as well. Does that look good or do I need some other stuff in there? <clears throat> uh, it would look so much better with shadows on, but then it would lag a lot. Yes, I know, sort of lag a lot on things. Uh, Thomas the Tiger, do you mean? Yes, because of the number one, of course. I do, I do. I know, I'm not currently in the process of getting married. <laughs> are you sure? I don't know, I think those are too many bushes there. I think having them occasionally works a bit better. Yes, that's much better. At least for this bit on the side there. I don't want it to be constant. Maybe where the trees are a bit more. And then over here a bit less again. And I need to rotate that one because those two are rotated the, rotated the exact same way. Okay, let's see what that looks like from the other side. So Lagalot is on site and ready for laggy laggy action. Wahoo! Wahoo! I sound like the fox from Mary Poppins. We need one more there. Just in that little bit there. Eh, that's a bit no, they need it on on there. Yes. Like that. Coming out there. Coming around. Also, no loots because my laser will literally come to you if you loot them. Um, there is no worry, I will not. <laughs> and I also thank you for not uh, bringing that into my chat. Shrug. Good. Okay. Right. Or left, whichever you want. I hope it's not... But I did change something. I placed that bush. I really did. You can go back and watch the... If you uh, go into the clip thing. <clears throat> you can see. Place a bush. Then I save. 
Come on. Uh, they say always go left, so I'll pick that one. <laughs> Unless, actually, if they say always go left, I would suggest you watch a Doctor Who episode called Turn Left. Yes, there is uh, quite a lot of stuff that you well, will probably be quite confusing to you if you're not familiar with the previous episodes. However, it is a brilliant standalone episode as well. But again, it really does also get in a lot from you having known the previous episodes. It's, it's basically, there's, there's a time beetle, there's alternate history, the Doctor is dead, well, the Doctor dies. You've got parallel dimension travel from a previous companion, you've got... Uh, yeah, you've got the Titanic crashing into London, no, not that one, the space one, yes. You've got... Yeah, you've got a lot of stuff. It's, it's a great episode. And as for the loot, I'd prefer to leave it with its rightful owners. Alright. Loot. Mm. Uh, even if there's a lot of works there. Hmm. It's called Amazon. You eating bushes again? Space London? No, no, no. Actual, real London. The, the space Titanic crashed into real London. Because the premise of the episode is that... There's a time beetle, which uh, grabs hold of the current companion, Donna, main character. And basically what it does is it makes that individual take a slightly different action in the past and through that, it feeds off of all the difference between what the timeline should be and what the time beetle is making it. So <clears throat> the, the, the point where it branches is in the original timeline. Oh, and it even loads. No database repair. Look. The difference is that in the original timeline, Donna was in sure so she's in the car with her mum and her mum she's not great she's really um she's uh, telling donna oh you'll never amount to anything you're just lazy and all that stuff and uh she wants to apply for a job somewhere and so <clears throat> and so, so she needs to apply for a job and for that, she needs to turn right to go to that job interview. Her mum says, oh, you can give up. You'll never get that job anyway. And originally, she had the strength to say, no, I'm going to go for that. What the time beetle, beetle did, it changed that slightly. So instead of turning right, where all the events will unfold, where she'll meet her fiancé, which will then lead to him poisoning her because they need something to to get this special thing for the Rachnos, which is how she meets the Doctor, which is how that all starts. Instead of that happening, she turns left and doesn't get the job, doesn't meet the Doctor. And so you've got a butterfly effect of things happening, which leads to the point where the Doctor, in that episode, the, the Doctor's just lost a companion, someone he loved, and in that episode, the Doctor is so consumed by that loss that he's just watching everything around him burn, and he needs Donna, <coughs> sorry, he needs Donna to snap him out of that to save his life. Now, if Donna isn't there, then she can't save his life, which means that the Doctor, canonically, in the Time Beetle timeline, which is a thing that only happens on Doctor Who. <laughs> the Doctor dies. <clears throat> but if the Doctor dies, then in all those later adventures, which we've already seen with the Doctor's future companion, because there's a companion in between, the Doctor isn't there to save the day. And so that companion, before she even meets the Doctor, because the Doctor's dead, in that situation, has to sacrifice herself 
to save the day. And now that character is also gone. And so the episode, as it progresses, slowly strips away all of the characters. Like, okay, well, we've got Martha. Well, yeah, Donna might be affected, but we've got Martha. She'll save them. We've got the Doctor. It's like, oh, no, the Doctor's dead. Oh, now Martha's dead. Oh, now these characters are dead because the Doctor isn't there to save them. So these characters have to sacrifice themselves. And then <clears throat> with a Titanic crossing in, uh, well, the crashing, that was another Doctor Who episode that we've previously seen where the Doctor saved the day. But of course the Doctor said, so now the Titanic crashes into London and there's a refugee situation because everybody wants to escape the, the city of, well, everyone wants to escape London. The total financial crash, the en entirety of Britain is pretty much smashed by that. And so you've got all these refugees, and so we watch as Britain becomes a dictatorship, essentially, all because Donna turned left instead of right. <clears throat> and then, to fix this, there's another character who's fr who was a previous companion who was trapped in a parallel Earth, parallel dimension, parallel universe, but she manages to cross over because the links between dimensions are breaking down because the timeline's degrading. And so she manages to then, uh, well, save the day, basically, <clears throat> by uh, eventually getting Donna to, well, I don't know if I should spoil it. Should I spoil it? Please let me know in chat. Should I spoil it? Or should I not spoil it any further? Because the ending to that episode is uh, actually quite good. Ah, uh, right. Space London? Nope, real London. Let's go. Space Titanic into real London. Hmm, continue. <laughs> also, do you think that in Star Trek the, uh, there are Olympic-class ships called Titanic and Britannic as well? Ha! That would be interesting. Yes, yeezys. Giant Titanic destroy entire London. Boom. Yes, basically. God, the Doctor wasn't kidding when time was complicated. I don't get that reference. Was that in the one of the episodes that of the new season that I haven't watched? The ones that you caught parts of, parts of. Also, why do you refer to time as a as an entity? Interesting. Uh, she he sure wasn't. Oh, that's true. Haha, <laughs> yes. He, at the time, it was David Tennant, I think. Oh! Oh! Of course, in Blink, with a wibbly, wobbly, timey wimey thing. Time is complicated. Yes, of course, that makes sense. Haha. <laughs> yes. Also, there's a personal thumbnail suggestion for the episode. Oh, my thought watermark. Uh. Wait, what? You mean turn left or this episode of of, the, of Milton Valley? <clears throat> the Doctor is a genuflex icon. <laughs> well, yes, it, it, that is true. Oh well, something like that image. Maybe not then. <clears throat> no, it was the one with the blinky statues things. Yeah, it was blink. Yeah, people don't get time. People think it's linear, but it's not. It's more. Timey, wibbly, wobbly, timey, wimey. Time is complicated. Yes, I know. I need to get the reference now. With the 17 DVDs. <laughs> yes, alright. The angels. The angels. Turn left. Turn left. Alright. So do you want me to spoil it? Do you want me to spoil the ending of Turn Left? Or not? That's alright. It seems we are nearing the end. I'm gonna turn my plane and land in. See you on Kanga Stream. <coughs> Gold in the background. Finally! Alright. Ha! <laughs> Okay, then, thank you for stopping by, and happy birthday, VGR. Have a good night. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna end soon anyway, just gonna place a few shrubs and then gonna wait uh, to see the response whether I should spoil it or not. Yep, okay. You're welcome.
Okay. Right. I think that's good because you can't really see that other hill there. Well, that looks a little. Uh, I need to move some of these around to make it look a little bit less uh, uniform. Yeah, that's better. Although I think I need a second one there. <clears throat> okay, now thumbnail. Oh, did I save? I don't think I saved. Let's save. Ah, I did save. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's uh, strange that you are that excited about not saving. Ah, yeah, I didn't save. Good. <laughs> Let's see what that would look like. Let me turn down the volume first. Ah, okay, but a bit boring. Okay. Right. Maybe one down here with the bushes, perhaps. Oh, maybe just like that. Who knows? Although that is a bit similar to the previous thumbnail as well. Uh, although maybe. <clears throat> Train? Eh, no. I think it's good without the boxcar. Uh, maybe we can. I can have a look. That looks pretty. Aw, thank you. That is what I aim for. I hope you think the route looks pretty as well. <laughs> okay, well, I think. I'm sure one of those will work. So. Uh, yes. I'm guessing you don't want the ending spoiled then, since nobody said yes, spoil it. That's that's good. You should watch it yourself anyway if you're interested. So, uh, with that, there we go. On the second. So, thank you all very much for watching. This Monday is Civ 6 with Robin, multiplayer. Should be interesting. And, uh, yes, if you're playing trains, have a look on the download station for Central Europe, as well as Cornish Railways. And my game Living Art is available on Steam, so, yes. Also, please, have a look at Star Trek Pathos, if you like Star Trek or tabletop role-playing, or stories in general. I don't think you'd be disappointed, but, of course, it's up to you. Anyway, I mean, I don't get anything from it, it's just, literally, I don't get anything from it, it's just, I think you might enjoy it. So... Thanks for having us. Maybe hold your hand up when you're done with the spoiler, so we know when to unmute. Ah, but eh, it was great fun. Oh, I'm glad. Indeed, see you tomorrow. Sure, thanks. Many thank cues for the stream and chat. <laughs> okay, well, until tomorrow then in Kango's stream. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you for coming. Yes. Just putting the screenshots in the today's streams. There we go. Bye.